Hmm. I guess we gotta cover these walls. You think we could use paneling? Or is that gonna look really cheap? Hmm. I don't know. Maybe we could make it I wonder it if we should do shiplap. Yeah. Is that still a thing? I don't think so. Shiplap would be quick. Shiplap. It's just wood. Why is it so expensive? We could always do drywall. I don't think I can do sheetrock, but we could hire someone. That sounds expensive, and I don't think that's in our budget, so uh, probably not. I guess we'll just have to do it ourselves. This is going to suck, isn't it? Jesus Christ! Okay, to get this done, we're gonna need some things. Like screws. Like a lot of screws. Something to drive the screws, levels to make sure that everything is nice and straight, a tape measure, one of these T-square things comes in super handy, a razor to cut the sheetrock, one of these saws to cut out around doors and outlets. You can use an electric cutoff. It's a lot faster, but it's pretty unforgiving. One of these pans to mix up the mud. You can use pre-mixed joint compound or the kind you mix yourself. It dries a lot faster. Knives for taping the joints. Tape to cover the joints, there's all kinds. Paper tape is the most common. There's also mesh tape and this fiberglass tape that kind of irritates your skin but works really well. Finally, some outside corner bead. I'm sure we're forgetting something, but I think we've got enough to get started. You know what? I think that looks pretty good. Now we just measure and cut. With drywall, you usually start with the ceiling first. It was already done in this room, so we're gonna start at the top and work our way down the wall. Just make sure you've got all your tools close by because this stuff is not light. You could always rent a lift to make things easier. Or buy a cheap one off Amazon like we did. You gotta assemble it, but it's not too bad. Now we just screw in place. You'll need to place your screws every 12 to 16 inches on the studs, uh, unless it's the edges or the ceiling. In that case, you do it every eight inches. Don't overdrive your screws. You want it to just be far enough so it will cover easily with mud. Avoid drywall joints at the corners of door frames and windows. These areas are prone to crack. It's better to cover it with a full piece and just cut out the opening. We also have to cut around the outlets, so make sure to turn off your breaker and tuck in your wires. Measure and mark the center of the outlet. Don't fully attach the drywall until the box is cut out because you could damage it. Just tighten the screws enough to hold the drywall in place. Transfer those measurements from earlier and get ready to cut out the box. You can use a drywall saw or you can use power tools because they are a hell of a lot faster. And then just get after it.
Once the drywall is hung, now we get to move to the part that everybody dreads, mud. In theory, it's pretty simple. You just fill the joint with compound and then you apply tape over that to add strength. You'll need to embed the tape in the mud. So start in the middle, hold it so it doesn't slide and pull your knife across the tape and then repeat for the other side. Repeat this process for all the joints. While you're at it, go ahead and cover those screws. Use paper tape for your inside corners. It's already got a crease on it, so just go ahead and fold it. Same as your other joints, just fill it with mud and embed the tape. An inside corner trowel really helps for inside corners. Who would have thought that? You will need a corner bead for outside corners. We prefer the vinyl kind. You just have to cut it to fit. Use spray adhesive to attach it to the wall and then really press the bead into the adhesive. We also use staples for extra added stability. Add some water to your joint compound. This will help thin it up a little bit and help you with the next couple of steps. For the next few coats, we'll be using progressively larger knives to help hide the seams. Build mud to the thickness of the knife you're using, pull off any excess, then apply pressure to the outside edge of the knife. Do this for the top and the bottom of the seam. This is called feathering and it helps blend the joint. Then we like to make one final pass to smooth everything out and then we let it dry. So to review, fill the joint, tape the joint, Embed the tape. Don't forget to feather the outside edges. Then use progressively larger knives to smooth it all out. And look, it's gone. We're replacing our floor so we didn't use a drop cloth. You may want to because this step gets messy. Oops! My bad. Yes! Oh my god! No more dubstep! Next up is sanding. This step creates a silky smooth finish, but it sure does create a lot of dust. A drywall sander with a vacuum attachment really helps. We got this one off Amazon. It was fairly inexpensive. Much better. Of course, a pole sander will work just fine. We've named this one Dusty. <laughs> 
Some people stop at this stage and this level of finish is fine, especially if it's going behind cabinets or tile, but for the smoothest possible finish, you'll need a skim coat. Mix up a batch of very thin joint compound, thin enough you can apply it with a paint roller. And then apply this compound to the entire wall. Don't worry about the texture because you will be smoothing that out with the largest knife that you have. Pull your knife across the entire wall to smooth it out and then sand for a glass-like finish. Look how smooth. All right, I think we're just gonna end the video here. So we hope that you enjoyed our little overview of sheetrock. Obviously, you can find way more in-depth videos about how to install drywall, but we thought this was a cool way to show you what you'd be getting into if you decided to do this project yourself. Yeah, now that we've got the sheetrock pretty much finished, we've got all sorts of cool stuff going on, so be sure to stay tuned. We've got cabinets, floors, two bathrooms, countertops, and all sorts of cool stuff happening. Next up, we're gonna finish skim coating the walls and then we're gonna paint them. So if you've got a color that you really like, drop it in the comments below. Leave us the name of the manufacturer and the paint color and maybe we'll use it. Uh, yeah, and if you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and other than that, we'll catch you on the flip side. Bye.